Andre's Arctic Balloon Expedition, 1897, Episode 5. Andre, Frankel, and Strindberg set up their camp on Kavitoya Island on October the 6th, 1897. Although Andre's journal tells us that they were hopeful that they could survive the Arctic winter in their camp, there was no further news of them until 33 years later. Thirty-three years later, the world finally heard about the fate of the three explorers. In 1930, the remains of these adventurers were found by a Norwegian ship that landed on Kivotoya. The summer of that year was warmer than usual, and the water around the island was open. Some of the ship's crew went onto the island in search of water and found Andre's small boat. It was frozen in the snow and full of equipment. They also found a boat hook engraved with the words Andre's Polar Expedition, 1897. Intrigued by their find, they looked farther and found a journal and two skeletons with Andre's and Strindberg's names on the clothing. A little later, another ship landed and photographed the area. They found Frankel's skeleton, a tin box of Strindberg's photographic film, his logbook and maps. The crew gave these to the Swedish government and took the bodies of the three explorers to Stockholm. The Swedish people had mourned the three when they disappeared, and when their bodies were returned to Sweden 33 years later, they celebrated them as heroes. They lined the streets to honor them as they were carried to their place of burial. Nell Strindberg's fiancée, Anna, waited for his return for 13 years before marrying and moving to England. It was while she was visiting her family in Sweden years later that she heard the news that the remains of the expedition had been found. She learned that Nils was the first to die and was buried by Andre and Frankel who had looked after Nils's most precious belongings. Among Nils' things was a heart-shaped locket with a photograph of Anna and a lock of her hair. What killed these young men? Scientists have studied what they ate and doctors have studied their physical problems that are described in their diaries. Others have looked for clues found at the death site where the small stove still had kerosene in its tank. Some say that they died from eating undercooked polar bear meat. Others say it was scurvy, while many think it was the extreme cold, poor diet, and exhaustion. Perhaps it is surprising that they died surrounded by food. But maybe the surprise is that they found the strength to live for so long. Ninety-three of Nils Strindberg's photographs survived the Arctic cold. Today these are as important as the diaries of the three men and remain an interesting part of Swedish history. We hope you have enjoyed this true story.